So, hey everybody, um, thought it would be important today to get together with uh, City Manager Rob Schilmer. So he's here with me. We are uh, locked away almost at six feet apart <laughs> uh, up in his office uh, today to bring some information to you, basically some, some uh, basic information about some things that are ongoing in the city already. Um, there's some red tape around doing a live video from the city's uh, Facebook page. So. Once we wrap up with this recording that we can post on the city page, then we'll do a Facebook Live where we can do some interaction and, um, and take some questions uh, live as well. Uh, so first off, just want to talk about voting. Uh, this, If you're paying attention and watching some of the governor's press conferences, a lot of this information was already addressed as well. But voting, you can go to voteohio.gov. Uh, voting is going to be on April 28th. Uh, but I know some people it's taken about uh, a little over a week or two weeks to actually receive their absentee ballot in the mail. So if you're planning on an absentee ballot, please go to voteohio.gov immediately and request your absentee ballot to make sure you get that in time. Uh, the trucking issue and parking. So we have been discussing that for a while. That's been quite a, a topic on Facebook. Uh, some concerns about uh, drivers who are delivering goods into the community and what we can do to make sure that we're taking care of them. So, as most of you know, we have purchased the Marion Meadows Shopping Center. And uh, Rob, was what day? Tuesday, Wednesday last week that we closed on that property? Or I don't know, was it Monday? Yeah, we, we closed early in the week and by midweek we had possession. Yep. So once we knew, we had, uh, Rob and I had been discussing uh, about the possibilities of what the Marion Meadows Shopping Center parking lot might be um, in, in terms of to our, our trucking community. And once we knew we had possession of that, then uh, we started getting serious about what details uh, could be worked out for those drivers. So we just want to make it clear now that we, now that we do own it, we have possession. Uh, we have two different groups of drivers that we're trying to, to take care of. One is the drivers that live here locally. So when they're home and they have an off day or they've got some time in between their shifts, they need a place to park where they can go visit with family and things like that, uh, be with their be with their family and their, and their kids. They have a place to park uh, without worrying about being towed. And then we also have another group of drivers who are delivering supplies and goods into the community, into our local stores. And if they need to stop and grab a bite to eat or they need to rest a little bit or uh, even an overnight stay, uh, they can also feel comfortable stopping in Mary Meadows, parking there, uh, and they're not gonna have any issues or any citations. Uh, so. Uh, we have been working with some local restaurants, uh, and there'll be some announcements coming out later on which um, kind of a spreadsheet on which uh, restaurants are working uh, with us. But they've changed some of their policies to allow some uh, actual walk-up ordering through their drive-through system, because obviously those trucks aren't going to fit through uh, through the drive-throughs. So we've got local businesses who understand this as well and are willing to change their policies to work with uh, with the drivers. So, Rob, did I miss anything about that from a parking perspective? Um, I think as we, we get this moving forward, if we, if we need any more announcements or any more details to talk about that, we'll certainly uh, make that information available. Uh, but for now, yes, uh, as far as the rest of Heber Heights, please, like I think I mentioned on my post yesterday, be aware there's going to be now some traffic with semi-trucks coming southbound from the highway on 201. So we're just going to be patient with these drivers, let them get to where they're going, and then certainly, since they're going to be out walking around, going to the different restaurants, the pedestrian traffic is going to be increased. So please remember just to be uh, mindful and watch out for that increased traffic uh, while they're crossing 201. So next, let's talk about our parks. Our parks are open, but the playgrounds are closed. So I think, again, the governor's orders and directions have been everyone needs to, to get out, get fresh air. I think everybody needs some uh, just for own mental health uh, rather than being cooped up in the house, just practice the social distancing. Um, when you're outside, you can go to our parks, enjoy them. I've been to the parks and have been really pleased with the number of people that I've seen taking advantage of our parks uh, during the day. But the playgrounds are closed. It's just, uh, I don't want to say that it's not safe, but it's not safe because we just don't know. So there's no sense taking chances um, with the kids out there on the playgrounds because we just don't, we don't know what we don't know. So please follow those rules. Uh, we've taken caution tape. Uh, we've, we've put it out there. Our public works department and parks are, are out 
checking the, the caution tape and the status and putting it back up if necessary. We've made the decision not to go with any kind of fencing or snow fencing or construction fencing or any barricades because we are still hoping that the uh, common sense, quite frankly, of our residents will uh, come through and just know that's not the right thing to do and the caution tape should be a reminder that that's not the right thing to do. So uh, just pay attention to that and stay off the playgrounds. Those are not our directives, but those are directives by the governor. When it comes to our basketball courts, um, I was a little surprised um, going through Cloud Park the other day and seeing what I would probably call 40, 50 kids uh, up there on the courts playing basketball with probably another uh, 10 setting on the bleachers in pretty close proximity to one another. So uh, I talked with, with Rob and we just made the decision to not only just remove the rims, uh, but we've just taken the entire backboards off of the poles there. Now, have we done that in the other, other parks as well? In Cottonwood, we have some basketball courts over there. Yeah, the ones at the uh, community uh, were within a fenced area, so we just we just locked the fence. Okay, all right. So, and again, those are, are really more orders from the governor because his, uh, his statement was basically no sharing of basketballs, footballs, soccer balls, that kind of thing. So when, when you're sharing those and you're in that type of a sport, it's going to be impossible not to be uh, close to one another. So again, those are just directives that we're trying to follow um, to get people to, to follow here in the city. I've had some questions arise concerning uh, homeowner associations and the parks and playgrounds and courts in, uh, in different developments or private developments that had HOAs. Um, specifically, I mean, a couple, they've made, made it really known to us that that's not public property, that's private property. So there isn't anything we can do in regards to HOAs and, their, and the parks within those. So if you're in a private development that has a park and you see people uh, violating those orders on playgrounds or on any type of uh, courts, ball courts that are available there, then you need to make that known to your HOA president uh, that those things just shouldn't happen and it should be the responsibility of the HOA to actually find a way to uh, keep that from happening, uh, quite frankly. I mean, again, we all know uh, this is tough, it's tough on the kids, but uh, the sooner that I think we all believe the sooner we follow the rules and just uh, stick to what we know works uh, the sooner we're going to get out of this uh, a reminder to check on your neighbors it's um, uh, even in a time of crisis like this it's okay to check on your neighbors um, hopefully uh, if you don't know their cell phone number or landline number uh, knock on the door yell through the window through the screen door something just make sure they're okay especially if you have elderly neighbors um, People that, uh, or someone you know that uh, is in that higher risk group with an underlying health condition, uh, just find out if, if they need something. I know there's lots of options like click list from Kroger's, Shipped, um, you can, all kinds of online programs, but whether or not people have access to those, I don't know. So if nothing, just uh, be a kind, courteous neighbor and reach out to them to make sure they have what they need. And if they don't, can you help them get it? I think that's, uh, that's really important. Uh, being good people, kind people, and compassionate people during a time like this is really important for everybody. So lawn care, that's kind of one that has been brought up that um, the rules have kind of changed on a little bit. And uh, what I can tell you is it was a directive that was issued, was it uh, yesterday or today. today? So it was a directive actually issued today. Was it by the health department or through the governor? I'm not sure what office, but it was an interpretation declaring that it pretty much meets within the existing order where uh, the essential maintenance and upkeep of a home uh, and um, they have to find a lawn care. As you know, our grass ordinances are there and put in place to prevent uh, the overgrowth of grass and weeds that can lead to uh, vermin, insect infestation, rodents, right. etc. cetera. And uh, that's a health and safety issue in and of itself and we certainly don't wanna create additional health and safety issues. Sure. So yeah. uh, we as a city, we're not going to uh, certainly enforce or question any um, contractor that's out providing maintenance and upkeep to someone's home and luckily now we have the uh, support uh, of an interpretation of the order. Okay great so so I think yeah so that should answer all of your questions if you've got a lawn care company that you deal with um, that you like or one that you've seen advertised on Facebook if you need someone to cut uh, your, your lawn I know with all the rain that we've had 
weather is going to start getting warmer. I mean, this is a time where, um, you know, grass is going to be growing like crazy. So, uh, you know, you absolutely can contact a lawn care company now, and there is uh, interpretation of an order that allows the lawn care companies to be considered essential as part of the maintenance and upkeep on residential property. So please feel free if, if, if that's how you take care of your lawn, uh, you certainly are allowed to do that again. So uh, that is uh, certainly good news on, I think, on, on all of our parts. Right. I, know, I know I was extremely happy when I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was either that or, yeah, I could go buy a lawnmower. Uh, so next um, issue with taxes, uh, just to let everybody know that our deadline has been extended to July 15th um, as well to match what the federal and the state guidelines were in terms of filing your income tax. So uh, July 15th is the new date. Now let's talk about uh, evictions. So the local courts um, are still shut down through April the 6th. Um, that was from an administrative order through Judge Purges. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not gonna be surprised based on the governor's announcement today of keeping things um, kind of shut down to about May 1st. I know in the schools um, extended that, shut down through the 1st. I won't be surprised at all if the courts don't follow that order as well. So uh, there won't be any new um, hearings on evictions uh, while the courts are shut down. So as far as that goes, again, right now that order is through the 6th, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if Judge Purges doesn't extend that as well with another administrative order coming from the, coming from the courts. Uh, let's talk about the water bill. Uh, I know that was something uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think that was on like March 13th or 14th. Uh, Robbie and I had a discussion about water. Uh, if you can pay your bill, please continue to pay it. Um, but if you can't pay your bill, you're not going to be disconnected. Uh, but the water bill would continue to accumulate. Now, we're not charging any late fees or anything like that that's going to accumulate along with the bill. But, um, but, the wa but the monthly water bill would continue to accumulate. But if you can't pay, um, you know, we're not going to expect the entire amount of the bill all due at one time. So we'll work with you uh, through the water department to make sure that you have the opportunity to keep your water service and uh, pay your bill off over, over a period of time. So, uh, but you know, most importantly, if you do have the ability to pay your bill, please do. But if you can't, uh, certainly our goal is not to make someone or a family have to decide whether or not they uh, are gonna be able to purchase some groceries that they want uh, over the course of a week or a month uh, or, or pay their water bill. We don't want anybody in that situation. So, uh, so you can have some relief that way if, if need be. Trash, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about trash because some things aren't, haven't been picked up uh, next to the trash cans. There was an order that had went out by Republic Trash, I believe we posted on the city website back on, on the 19th, and that there is, there is no bulk pickup. Uh, so only put what's, uh, what can fit in your cans out of the curb. So if you, you need to uh, wait until the next week to, to fill that can back up or however we have to do this, we've just been, we don't want trash left uh, on the curb next to the cans and Republic has made it clear that uh, just due to the health and safety of their own employees as well, uh, no bulk pickup and they're only going to pick up what can fit in the can. So uh, follow those guidelines, please. Uh, and that'll also help, you know, just keeping our neighborhoods look nice and keep trash from blowing. I know we've had some very windy days the last couple of days, so it'll keep trash from blowing all over the place and keep our neighborhoods looking decent. Um, one other note with that on trash, we have arranged for a large roll-off dumpster that'll be placed at the Public Works building, which is behind Station uh, Fire Station 22 on Brant Pike. Uh, we're gonna be monitoring that for inappropriate items, uh, and we'll have some more details coming uh, on that soon. So if you do have an issue or you do have something that just has to, to go to the trash and it's uh, a bulk item that doesn't fit in your can, there will be a way that you can get rid of that and dispose of it through uh, a large dumpster Again, that will be behind uh, Station 22 at the Public Works building on their Brant Pike and Longford. Uh, and again, more details are coming on that soon. And then uh, the last thing on my list here uh, today for this uh, recorded portion of the video would be the census. I just want to remind everyone uh, there there's different deadlines that come up for the census. I'm not sure why there are different deadlines, but uh, I know one of them's coming up, but it's one of many. Please, I know it's very simple. Uh, everybody should have got something in the mail. There's actually a resident ID that's in the uh, the form that comes mm -hmm. in the mail. Once you log on 
uh, to the census website with that ID. It makes it incredibly simple. Uh, it won't take any longer than five minutes. And I can't express how important it is that everyone complete that census. All federal funding and, and money that comes through the state and into the local areas uh, is all dependent upon the census. So it's that important that everyone be counted. Um, it's, it's just extremely important. And I would ask all of you to take the five minutes necessary to hop online, fill that out. If you don't have access to the internet, if you can't do it through your phone, fill out the form and get it mailed back in. It really is that important. So uh, with that, um, I don't know, Mr. Shomer, if you have anything to add. Um, no. If not, we'll go ahead and um, we'll move on to doing a Facebook Live because I, I know there's lots of questions that you have. Uh, if there's things that we haven't covered, um, then uh, hopefully people will bring that up uh, during the live portion and, and we can take those questions. So uh, thanks uh, everyone for your time and I uh, appreciate you watching this. And again, always, always, always remember it's so incredibly important to be patient, be kind, uh, practice some empathy and some patience, and um, be good to your neighbors, check on them, and as always, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks.